Hello again, Nigeria. Good people, great nation. Welcome once more to that platform where you can hear your view, no matter which side you belong. This is, about, this is about the only television program where democracy thrives. Crossfire is all about Nigeria, by Nigerians and for Nigerians. We welcome all sides and all views. This program brings out issues that affect the polity and assembles experts and concerned parties. You too can participate by sending in your messages. That's exactly what we do on Crossfire. Yeah, the progressives are here. We are the progressives. No, you are not the progressive. Party A is the progressive party. Party B is not. These are part of what we hear every day on radio, television, and on the pages of newspapers. Every political party claims is a progressive. What does it really mean to be progressive? What makes a man or a political party to be called progressive? Is it the Aula or Regalia that makes you progressive or what? Are political parties in Nigeria formed along ideological lines? And the million dollar question for tonight is, who are the real progressives? Once again, welcome to Crossfire. I am Banja Abidomo. With me tonight, I have um, experts, opinion leaders who can really trust the, uh, this topic. Uh, from the stream right, I have uh, Mr. Dimeji Abitogun. Mr. Dimeji Abitogun is the publisher, editor in chief of ChapelNews.com. That's an online magazine. You're welcome to the program, sir. Thank you very much, sir. To his uh, immediate left, I have Prince Koye Odogia. Prince Odogia is a civil engineer by profession. He's also the director of publicity and research, the Labour Party of Nigeria, the Ondo State uh, branch. Welcome to the program, sir. Thank you, sir. Good evening, viewers. I also have uh, Dr. Adewale Alawi Adams. Dr. Alawi Adams is a financial expert, a management consultant. He's also the chief of staff to the vice chancellor of uh, Adelike University at the Ocean State. Welcome to the program, sir. Thank you, sir. Good evening, viewers. And to my immediate right, I have Mr. Jeffrey Abidoye. Mr. Abidoye, you know very well. He's a consultant in leadership. He's a public affairs analyst. He is the founder and national president of an LGO called Leadership Without Borders. You're welcome to the program, sir. It's a pleasure. Thank you so much. Um, straight to business, Mr. Adimeji Abitobu. Can you tell our viewers briefly what is progressivism? Thank you very much, Mr. Moderator. Uh, the idea of progressivism uh, started taking form and shape towards the end of the 19th century. And by the beginning of the 20th century, it had coalesced into a kind of um, left of the uh, of the ideological divide, um, political movement, and you find people who are more of Leninist, Marxist, political thought, beginning to uh, take it personal. That is reaching out to neighborhoods where you find peasant uh, workers and those who don't really have much in the society. What do they want? They dug into uh, what had begun with the church. This is the way things have always been. And this is the way things would always be done. And the other divide that says, no, the world is not a flat surface. It's round. Something that cost so many scientists their very lives in opposition to the Catholic Church of the time. So, in modern times, you find people who are better equipped in terms of education, in terms of deep ideological uh, opinions, beginning to say that there must be more deal, better deal, in terms of education, in terms of social reforms, and what or what not, politically, uh, the beginning to emerge as progressives. Now, coming to Nigeria, there were also people who had this belief that um, uh, there must be a kind of um, feudal oligarchy. You've had uh, late Chief Obafemi Awolowo trashing so hard the uh, so-called uh, hegemony up north at some point and challenging the desire of somebody not to stop uh, expansionism until the Quran had been dipped into the ocean. To him, having a fundamental reaction to that kind of um, uh, uh, riotous thinking 
was enough to make him a leading progressive light. You find Anthony Enauro, who was not satisfied at any point with having the uh, white people continuing the domination and colonialism of the country. He moved the motion for independence. You find the reactionary element saying, no, Nigeria wasn't yet uh, old enough or matured enough to experience self-governance. To some extent, that is one form. Now, in this present time, the question would be asked, does the hood make a monk? Not all the time. Certainly, you've had people who came in all kinds of gap and guises to say, um, Mr. A doesn't share this ideology with us. Mr. B does not share that ideology with us. Can he actually be seen as one of us? What I say to such people is that, uh, from way back in the 1940s in Canada, where you had a big amalgam of conservatives and uh, progressives, which culminated in the formation of the progressive uh, of the Progressive Conservative Party, which continues to have relevance in Canadian politics, the thing you will notice is that there is always the upstream, downstream uh, component to any political party. There could be conservative elements who would always want things to remain the way they are. And there are rap people who are usually party foot soldiers. They are ideologically driven and they would stop at nothing to make sure that those who hold, uh, who call the shots in any political organization are, are held to question. They are scrutinized at all times and they want more. It's an Oliver Twist society, don't forget. No matter what the leadership of a party does or does not do, some people would say, please, can we have it better? To that extent, you can say a political party, as it is at any time, is always composed of uh, progressives and conservatives. And by the way, in Nigeria of today, can we really say that? Let Bolaige, who authored the constitution of PDP, uh, ANPP, I mean, APP that later became ANPP, and uh, the, uh, the fading AD, because uh, as AD is today, I don't, I don't know if they have any elected uh, official anywhere in Nigeria. We have AD but, alive anyway. But then there is an offshoot of AD, ANC, where people would yes. put Awolowa spectacles, where people would dress in the garb of MKO and all that and say that is enough to make them uh, uh, to be seen as progressives. Okay, I, said, no, I, I think I'll have to cut you short now so that to allow others to talk. We'll come back to you later, Mr. Abitomo. Uh, now to Prince uh, Udogian. What makes a political party progressive? What makes a political party to be called a progressive party? Is it the name? Well, or what? Uh, thank you, Mr. Moderator. And I, once again, I say good evening. Uh, every party, if you look at the ideology, especially those we have in Nigeria, uh, have very uh, similar ideology uh, uh, based on their the composition of the rules that they pretend to guide them. But if I had to talk about uh, Labour Party, which uh, uh, ideology transcends the border uh, of Nigeria to Europe and uh, majorly, yes, in Europe and now in Ondo State, we will see that uh, progressivism is about the people. It should be programmed towards the people that will take care of the yearnings of the people. But uh, in some cases, it is an hypothetical issue where people are only saying it and are not doing it. And we find out that around here, I mean in the Southwest to be precise, the noise about being progressive is louder than the action we can see on ground. We have 12 years of some uh, uh, party in a state in the southwest here. We have some that are uh, more than a year. We have some that is going to be three years. If we are going to base our measurement on what really the progressives have, it should, it should be based on the actions. It should be based on visible things. It should be based on what we can count to have been done vis-a-vis -vis the number of years that each party 
or whoever is the leader in every of these states have done. And in some cases, we find out that the actions of some of those parties are not uh, cosmopolitan. What do I mean? It's not uh, matching the word order. If we have to take it very deeply for the benefit of our people, for the benefit of Nigeria, and mostly for the benefit of Southwest, I think we have to, we have to narrow it down to matters. What are the expectations from a progressive? Is it uh, the expectation from progressive on public education, on public infrastructure, on public health, or public security? Then I think in that direction, we will really be making meaning of this. Otherwise, all we'll be saying will just be theories. So I, I want to, us to say it, to see it as if we have to take it based on, uh, on uh, education, which we see to be very fundamental, which we see to have brought everybody in position of authority today to where they are, in Southwest, in Nigeria, and in the world as a whole. Then we now have to ask, what is progressive? Progressive is about doing things forwardly. It's about improving on what we have on ground. Then, in which way are we improving on these things? Well, everybody will do according to the depth of knowledge he has on every matter, or the influence of what he has. So we cannot be seen to, to, to we cannot be said to be a progressive by just word of the mouth, by less action. We want to be seen as a progressive by what we do what improvement we have done, what audacious project or program have we set that is increasing and making progress continually in the state where we are. So I think our people should ask questions. What have we done in this area of education? What have we done in this area of public infrastructure? Roads, uh, portable water for the people, security for the people. All this is what we have to narrow out the activities of a progressive person or a progressive party to, not just talking that we are progressive. We are progressive. Okay, then. Thank you, uh, Prince of uh, Dr. Alawi Adams. Okay. If people are basically the determinant factor in the progressive life, yeah. how can we classify Nigerian parties on people should enter their projects? How can you, how, how can you just... Uh, Tell us if these parties are really meeting the objectives of the progressives in their states where they, they are in power. Thank you very much. Power, as it is, should belong to the people. And whatever power any party or any head of government or any team of people working with any head of government, whether at the federal or the state level, whatever power they have, whatever power they have acquired that is not focused at improving the life standard of the people is a wasted power. Um, progressivism is all about focusing your attention, focusing your action, focusing your work at the improvement of the life standard of the people. In actual fact, in the 1900s, Americans began to venture into progressivism, as uh, uh, Mr. Bitobu rightly said, and you find out that President Theodore Roosevelt was one of those American presidents who ventured into progressivism. And you will find out that all he was interested in, America had been known for liberty, everybody wanting to show that they are free, freedom everywhere. And this freedom, at the end of the day, is what is leading to people carrying guns and blowing other people's heads in America today. I have freedom, I can do what I like. But when people like Theodore Roosevelt came, he said, no, we should depart from that. We should be more concerned about the welfare, welfareism of the people, where we will see that every American is living well, living well beyond uh, poverty level. And when you have to do that, you will require the system, that is the governmental system, to begin to redistribute wealth, to begin to look at the social, the social welfare of the people, to begin to see that the infrastructures we are putting together is targeted at making life better for the people. That's what is called progressive. 
That's progressivism. And if you, whatever you are doing that is centered at making the higher echelon of the society who are handling the wealth of the nation to become richer, it's not, it's not, it's not progressive. And that's what most of the parties in Nigeria are centered on, without any exception. Without any exception. Look at what we just went through recently, the fuel subsidy thing. The fuel subsidy thing couldn't be seen as looking at the, the welfare of the people. Majority of Nigerians in the lower echelon, they are all poor and they are hungry. They can't find food to eat. Their houses, their houses are, not, are not properly lit. There's no power in their houses. Most of them don't have jobs. Their children don't have jobs. And then, you see making life more difficult for them. What, what is progressive about that? At the party level, at the state level, is the same thing all over. Nigerian government, both at the federal and the state level, are still interested in the higher echelon of society, where people just want to stay somewhere. They will want to do everything, not to make the rail system work, which is what is going to benefit people in the in the in the in the in the, in the transport sector. The education area has been hijacked. You find out that the federal universities are not thriving again. Because other people are coming into the university system that want to see to it that this small, small fee they are charging in those places is not going to benefit them. So that area too can be dying gradually. You find out that water is not there for the people. Anything that is done that is not targeted at the welfare of the people does not go in line with progressivism. And when you have to be progressive, you must be people focused. Educationally, infrastructurally, Whatever wise you call it, whatever it is, housing wise, everything must be targeted at the people. How do we improve the welfare of the people? And the only way you can do that is rearrange the, uh, the, wealth, the, wealth, the wealth creation and the wealth distribution. Impose more tax on the people who are making all the money through government support and the rest of it. And that tax you are getting from them, use it to develop what is going to improve the welfare of the, of the, of the majority of the people. That's all about progressives. And those who are doing it, they are doing it well. Today, Obama is, is towing the, the footsteps of uh, Theodore Roosevelt in making sure that American wealth is just distributed so that the people down below the line are getting more of the, of the focus of the wealth of the nation than the people who are up there who have been the ones who have been dominant. But here in Nigeria, everybody is interested in themselves. The party leaders are interested in themselves. How many contracts have I got? How many of my children have I put in higher places? They replace themselves with their children gradually, and the children of, of the commoners are there suffering, and you say you are progressive. Progressive in what terms? So progressivism is beyond party lines, beyond all this, but they can be affected right from the party line to the individual line to the focus that is targeting okay. the Okay. Thank yeah. you, Dr. Lawe. Let's uh, go to Jeff now. Jeff. What is the difference between a conservative and a progressive? Well, thank you so much. Um, I think that is clear. We look at um, the kind of politics and the kind of leadership being displayed, especially in the last 12 or into 13 years on interrupted democracy in our country today. Um, because if we were to carry out um, a critical appraisal and analysis, 12 years is enough to, for us to be able to measure, uninterrupted by any military error or something. Uh, looking at uh, the progressives and the conservatives, like we said, we have the two set of people within all the parties and uh, uh, corridor of powers in this country. Uh, the conservative most times are people who want the status quo to remain. They may be paradventure, they are benefiting and they are comfortable with that and all that. Though they, they are not that proactive in embracing change, so to say. But the progressives are the names provided are people that are proactive. They are thinking on the best and the better way to you know, add value to the people on a daily basis. Even while the people they are leading are sleeping, they are not. They are thinking daily on now to move their people from a poor location to a better location. And when you talk about progressive, really, Anywhere you find any genuine progressive anywhere in the world, there are core attributes, there are core principles, there are core ideals and philosophy that you know personify and dignify them. One is integrity, the other is credibility, another one is transparency and honesty. You have them, you know, with transparency, probity, and accountability, and above all, they have respect for the other person. Then they have the fear of God. But if 
what we have seen in the last 12 years, irrespective of party, whatever party we have now, we have PDP, we have Labour, we have SCN, and NAD and all that, ANPP and all that. Measuring them critically without bias, without sentiment and without prejudice. My brother, those who are parading themselves, thinking by wearing your kind of cap, by wearing big agbada and whatever, and one kind of cap this way and all that. Are you targeting the priest to at myself? No, I'm talking generally okay, now. It's not, no, no, no. That's why I have to refer to you because you're dressing today, you know, personify you, you know. Maybe you're trying to identify with the progressives. So it's not about what you wear, like um, um, my colleague said earlier on. You know, it's about what you personify, what you display. You see, when you talk about progressives today, for instance, in America, which is our role model, when the conservatives are coming in, the Americans know what they expect. When the Democrats are coming in, they know, I mean, the Republicans are coming in, they know what to expect. When the Democrats are coming in, they know what to expect. But in Nigeria, we've, been, we've seen, for instance, in this state, we've seen AD, we've seen PDP, now we've seen Labour. But when you begin to measure by these core attributes that I mentioned here, integrity, credibility, transparency, honesty, property, accountability, equity, and fair play, and above all, the fear of God, can we say they are truly progressive in returns? These are the questions. Okay. So it's, it's, it's not the idea of, you know, but unfortunately, you see, because... I